This video is a quick tutorial on how to use GHDL to do your own freeform logic simulation. So at some point you'll want to break away from VHDL web and just write your own test benches, your own entities, simulate it all by yourself and have complete control. And then be able to see outputs of what, what you produced. And so GHDL is actually the tool that's underlying VHDL web. And it's a freely available open source simulator for VHDL. You can also use Model Sim, aka Questa Sim, which is a professional package. And so both GHDL and Model Sim are installed on the lab virtual machines, and you can use those. And you can also get them online. GHDL can be easily uh, installed on um, any Linux system as well as uh, Windows and Mac. And Model Sim is available for Windows and is available on the Linux cluster machines at school. Okay, so here we are. I've just created a folder with some demo files. And over here, I just have a very, very simple VHDL module. Uh, we're going to use the standard text.io package so that we can write stuff out to the console. We've got an entity here. Uh, it's, an enti it's empty. Uh, there's no ports because this is going to be a test bench. And the architecture here just has a single process that then writes to the output console, says hello world, and then waits so that we don't end up in an infinite loop here. Okay, so this doesn't do anything with digital logic, but it is a very simple hello world program that lets us go ahead and actually demonstrate that the, the pipeline is working. I've also created a make file. So I've defined GHDL as just assuming that it's already in our path. If that's not the case for you, then you can feel free to edit that. I've added the flag to use the VHDL 2008 standard. By default, I believe it uses VHDL 93. Then there are three phases to actually running, the GH, running VHDL code with GHDL. So first is an analysis phase. So this is just going to look at your VHDL module and or look through your files and try to find all the entities that are defined there. So you give it, pass it the name of the VHDL file itself. And if you have more than one file, you've got multiple entities. Normally each entity goes in its own file. Uh, then you would add multiple files here to this list. Then we elaborate. So we're gonna pass it the name of the top level entity that we want to examine. And so in this case, our entity is named hello world. So we'll pass it there. And then dash R actually executes that entity. So again, we're going to execute hello world. We want, we've specified a couple of arguments here that aren't going to matter for this demonstration, um, but may be useful to you in the future. So the first is this dash dash wave will save all of the signals into a waveform file that you can then open up. So on the lab machine, there is a tool called GTK Wave. So if you save, if you actually do some digital design simulation and save it as wave.ghw, you can open up GTK Wave and um, then see the actual waveforms that were produced. Uh, the second thing is stop time is one microsecond. So if you've got some, normally GHDL will run until all processes are waiting, have just hit a wait statement and are done with their process. But uh, very quickly, you're going to run into, once we start generating clock signals or we have other things that are just running continuously, they, they don't stop after any particular time. And so just putting in a hard stop time says you run the simulation for one microsecond of simulation time, and not to be confused with one, one microsecond of CPU time on, on this computer, but one microsecond of simulation time and then just stop there. And you can make that larger or smaller, depending on what you're actually trying to simulate. So both of those can be useful. Okay, now that we've got our make file, we've got our basic program, we can just run make. And because the make target here I've specified is all, um, you can type make all or just type make and it will execute it. Uh, because of the add signs here, we're not actually spewing out any output. So if I take this out, you can, you can see all of the details, um, the GHDL the command is running and then look, it comes out of it. 
Okay, so let's do another example. Uh, this time, I'm actually using this to build a test bench. So I've created a test bench here for a seven segment decoder. Uh, so we're just gonna, gonna want the standard libraries. It's a test bench, so no um, ports in or out of this entity. Then we'll declare the component for the seven segment decoder. So it's got a four bit input and then seven bits of output that are the actual segments. Then I'm gonna declare my own signals that I'm gonna pass into this module. I'm giving them the same name, but again, you can name them anything you want. We instantiate the device under test and again, map these signals to the input and output ports. And then we actually have the process here that's gonna execute the test. So I'm just using a for loop here. So for i and zero to 15, so iterate through all the possible values that s could take on. Remember that i is an integer, so we have to convert it to an unsigned value here. And then after each time, we'll wait for 10 nanoseconds. So if we go over to our make file, we've got to update the make file to use these new files. So we've got two files instead of just one, we've got seven seg test .vhd, and then there's the seven segment seven segment display module itself, seven seg .vhd. So that goes there. Then for the a new, uh, elaboration phase, we just need the name of this entity. So seven seg test. And because seven seg test relies on the seven seg entity, then GHD will automatically go look that up. And it knows where to find it because we already specified it in this previous phase. And then finally, we want to execute the seven seg test module. Here we'll save again the wave as an output. And this time we'll actually go look at it afterwards and we can leave the stop time the way it is. Although, And we'll leave the stop time the way it is. So we'll stop after one microsecond. Okay, here we go. So let's just go ahead and go run make. Again, this will run make all and it executes. And then we get this information that the simulation was stopped by a stop time at one microsecond. Okay. And if we just look at the files that exist here, we now have this wave.ghw file. And so let's go ahead and open that up in GTK wave and see if we can find anything. So GTK wave will let us open up the file. Or maybe not. So we can open it up in GTK wave. And then when you first open up GTK Wave, it doesn't show you anything. And so then we actually have to add those signals individually. So there's the top module called seven segment test. And then inside there's the device under test. So segments and S are the signals that we're driving. And then the device itself has its own signals internally. So let's go ahead and just grab segments and S the, the top level ones are fine here. And we can just drag um, them from down here into the module. So let's put segments at the top. Okay, so when segments is zero, or when S is zero, segments uh, zero, one, I think that's displaying it in hex. So let's go ahead and change the data format to show that in binary. And we can change this data format, for example, to decimal since that's what we want to think about from being zero to 15. Um, and then we can use a zoom fit to see all of the values as they change. Um, 
then you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And we can see every 10 nanoseconds, we're getting new values. So the input is incrementing and the output is changing accordingly. And we expect after we get to 15 that we would stop. Um, but you notice that it, it doesn't stop, it keeps going. It starts back over at zero, oh, zero, one, two, three, and so on. Let's look back at the code real quick. If you notice here in the test, we didn't actually ever end the process or we cause the process to wait. So we don't end up in an infinite loop like I warned about in the previous video because we do have a wait statement and we are making forward progress in the simulation. And then after we get to one microsecond, we can actually stop. But if we want to just run this once, which is totally sufficient, then we can just put a wait with a semicolon here. So let's go ahead and rerun simulation. And now we don't get a message that it was stopped by this stop time. It stopped on its own in this case. And GTK Wave will let us uh, reload uh, the waveform here. And now if we zoom out, you'll see that it does in fact stop at 15 after 160 nanoseconds. Okay, so this is the end of our super quick tutorial on how to use GHDL and GTK Wave and make to do your own VHDL simulations. And I encourage you, uh, either whether you use GHDL or whether you use Model Sim or some combination of both, go ahead and pull one of them out and play around with it and try writing some of your own VHDL code freeform.